Welcome to the YouTube channel for Bible Biker Church in Rockwood, Tennessee. I am Fred Marshall, Elder and Associate Pastor. We pray that what you're about to see is inspiring to you as it is the truth in the Word of God as it is written. We pray that it blesses you and anyone that you share it with. If you like what you see, please click on the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also know that you can find us on Facebook under the page name Bible Biker Church. Thanks and have a blessed day. All right, well, good morning, guys. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Awesome. Welcome to the Bible Biker Church. Glad you guys are here this morning. Glad you guys are watching out there on the internet. Just uh, praise God for another beautiful day. Amen? Amen. I think it may be the last cool day we have for a while, though. Just watching the weather for next weekend. Too bad that Ray from Herman wasn't this weekend. <laughs> but we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyway. It's uh, it's good to see you guys. You guys all energized, ready to worship God this morning? Amen. Yes. All right, well, stand up with me. Let's sing a couple of songs. What do you say? All right. Oh.
that says, Enter his courts with praise and his gates with thanksgiving. Is that right? Or do I get it backwards? Sometimes I get that one backwards, but you get the idea, right? Yeah. Yes. Wow. A thousand days elsewhere is not as good as one day in his court. Amen. Woo! I love that song. All right, let's do another one. Let's do uh, let's do an old hymn for a change. How about that? Right. We don't do those very often. Yeah. 
people are seeing our sign, people are meeting you guys at the flea market or at Walmart or wherever, and just and coming next door to my daughter. <laughs> yep, and just all over the place, all over the place. One of the things that I think is pretty cool is that I put up, you know, we got a Facebook page for Bible Biker Church and a Facebook page for Bible Biker Bible Study, and we have a YouTube channel. We put all of our stuff on. And I was thinking around a couple of weeks ago, and I saw this thing that said Google Ads. Well, I, I've got this on Google Plus, so if someone goes on to Google and says Biker Church, we actually pop up our address, a picture of the building, everything. Um, we're in a couple of uh, websites now that shows bikers across the country where they go to a church that either welcomes bikers or like us, our church is for bikers. So uh, th those are those are kind of things that I get excited about because our name's getting out there. Again, not because we want to be popular or anything like that. It has nothing to do with it. But because of those things, we're getting phone calls. And a couple of those people that have been here the last couple of weeks have done just that. They called me and they said, well, some of you guys back there did the same thing, called me, hey, what is this about? Well, this is what we are, this is who we are, and here's, you know, we're just starting out. So for a little group of 12 that started on June 2nd, we had 26 before the end of August. We more than doubled in two months. Now, not everybody's going to be here every week. We've got people that work every weekend, things like that. And I understand that, you know. So I just want you to know that I'm excited announce that we have a Google ad now. It's one of those things, I, I clicked on it to see what it would do, and I've got one now. And over the last 14 days, 30,000 people have seen our name. Oh, in a 25 mile radius. 30,000 people in a 25 mile radius. It gets better. Just because that they saw it scroll by their page. How many, how many, how many times you scroll down a page? You don't even look at the ad. You just keep going, right? Yeah. 115 people clicked on it to see where we were and what we were. They say if you get 10% of, of, of interest, then we may have more people coming than we can handle next week. That's you okay. Are. You are. That's okay. But we know that's happening. So that leads me into this next thing. Over here on the table, there's these little white cards called prayer request cards. Please fill those out and stick them in that little black bank there that looks like an eagle. It's a Harley Davidson bank. That's that. My return. Anyway, those prayer requests do get prayed over. So for those of you that have put them in there, please know they are being prayed over. Also, you'll notice that we don't pass them a collection plate. We don't think that's right to put in front of people. So if they don't have anything to give or can't give, whatever. We don't want to do that. So off in private, you can put your donations in there as well, your heartfelt giving. We don't use the word tithe. That's a Old Testament law term. We use the New Testament term of heartfelt giving. Okay? We don't say anything else about that. However, the funds that are put in there go right back into the ministry. And because I said that, I'll let you know that we buy materials for this facility. It's all we buy for it, with it. With it, for it. We buy materials for this place with it. There we go. I, I, I did take English as a foreign language in high school. <laughs> Even though I grew up here in Rockwood, it was still a foreign language. Anyway, so the funds that we do have in the bank, and we'll, we'll be happy to tell you, any, anybody that wants to know about that, we can tell you about it. We're an open church here, so we can tell you what our funds are for and how much we have. We have a work day coming up. This coming Saturday, this coming Saturday, that's the first day of September. Start at 10 o'clock in the morning. We usually try to pack up at 5 o'clock. We'll feed you at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So the funds that are going into that jar over the next week will probably go for the materials that we need for this weekend. Anyway, Will and I neither one take a, 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 a dollar out of it. We don't take a salary. So, um, in addition to that, we just spent some of the funds to set up for Hooray for Hi uh, Harriman. Almost said Hooray for Hollywood. <laughs> well, uh, Harriman may not be Hollywood, but you know, we're, it's, working on that. <laughs> we're working on that. Anyway, so Hooray for Harriman is Monday, September 3rd. So a week from tomorrow is Hooray for Harriman. Bible Biker Church, the Throttle Up Biker Bible Study, and 
healing in the name of Jesus. Jesus special forces. Healing. Jesus special forces healing. We'll have a booth together at the raid for him. We need your help. Come by, sit and talk to people, walk around, give us a break so we can get up and go to the restroom. It's going to be 90 degrees, so we'll need spell here in the day. Yes, sir. If you do plan on coming out, just uh, bring yourself a back chair and then go fit on your bike. Uh, we'll have a couple of extras there for people that want to come out and hang out, but just in case we have a bigger crowd coming in, uh, you know, you're able to just, just bring you something to sit on. We're going to take a, a fan, a couple of fans from here. Uh, we will have power at the booth, so um, we were going to give out water, but she said bring something else other than water because there'll be too many people giving away water that day. So you're good. Mm -hmm. something, Gatorade probably good. Yeah. yeah. But once again, the funds will come out of the bank shortly. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. Um, work day, great for Har Harriman. Almost did it again. Prayer cards, heartfelt giving. All right, everybody got that? Any questions? Any other comments? Anybody want to give me the food that's in their bag that they're not eating right now? No, okay. Just making sure. I keep teasing her about the food she brings into the church. Anyway. All right, let me open us up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you again for this beautiful day that you've given us. Father, with this cool temperature that we have outside, Lord, we know it's not going to last forever, but we just thank you for this on a beautiful day like today. Father, I thank you for the people that came in today. I thank you for the people watching out on the internet, Lord. I just ask that you bless them. And Father, for those that couldn't be here today for work or whatever other reason, Lord, just be with them until you can bring them back in your time. Father God, I just thank you for everything you're doing to us, for us, and through us in this facility. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. amen. If you're able to stand for one last song, please do.
chased a million demons and they brought them all. I'm a Christian on the steel horse I ride and Jesus, Jesus gave me new life. I'm a Christian. I got the Bible by my side and Jesus Praise God, my life is not like it used to be. I am not perfect. I know that may disappoint some of you, but I am nowhere near as bad as it used to be. You guys may be seated. Buckle up and hold on. At our church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe in God's radical, unconditional, and unwavering love for us. At our church, we believe that Jesus is God. We also affirm that you may or may not believe that Jesus is God. And we're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey to Lord Jesus. For years, churches have placed a high priority on Jesus as the get out of hell free card. In our church, we place the highest priority on Jesus as a live life to the fullest invitation. In our church, we believe every person has a dream deep inside their hearts and that God put that dream in there. At our church, we're not concerned with where you've been, but where you're going. At our church, we believe that the Bible is God's Word. It is real, it is living, it is active. We believe that people who don't go to church anywhere are not the enemy. They are real people who need the perfect love that only God can give. And we believe that God gives this love through the all people. Us. You just move us out of the way, let your light shine through. Father, I ask you to put the words in Brother Will's mouth so he can say what it is that you want him to say to us. Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see what it is that you're trying to show us. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. 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 Okay, now if you're like our, uh, my household, my, uh, my kids and uh, you know, my wife and, and our family and everything, uh, you deal with a lot of sickness. Uh, you deal with a lot of uh, afflictions that are uh, that are brought on, and a lot of times when you're at the doctor's office uh, and they ask you questions, they always ask you uh, about your uh, mother and your father or grandmother and grandfather about their medical history. And 
one of the things I've been thinking about a lot lately is, you know, people constantly ask Christians, you know, if, if God loves us so much, why does he bring so much sickness? Why does he allow us to be sick? Why does he uh, let my loved one pass away from a sickness? And I've heard that a lot. And that's one of the things that I, I get really nervous when somebody asks me that because they're looking for a sincere, uh, I wouldn't say so much educated, but I'd say a spiritual answer on, on why these things happen. And then you look in the Old Testament and see, you know, a lot about God's wrath on, on people that weren't following the way that God had told them to go. And if you follow the children of Israel through the Old Testament, you'll find out God tells them several times that they're going to turn away from Him, and He already knows it. But He's letting them know because it's pretty safe to say that not every single child of Israel turned on God uh, as much as what we see you know, the majority of them do. There are some that kept God's commandments. There are some that, that followed the law, but there's no way everybody could follow that law uh, without sinning because we're human. There's only one perfect person that walked the earth. And even when we read in the Old Testament, you know, about the children of Israel and, and how much they complained and how much how much God would show them that He existed, how many times they'd still turn away from God, and we look at us now. And you know, the world's a very fast place right now. We're growing faster than what we can keep up with. And just the things I've seen in my life. When I was a kid, we had a black and white TV. Me, you know, I'm, I forget how old I am. My wife could tell you, but she's in the children's church right now. But I'm somewhere around 48, 49, I don't know. But the thing is, in less than 50 years, we went from having a rotary telephone and a black and white TV. And as a child, I've had to hold the antenna on the TV for my dad to be able to watch the news that he wanted to watch. Uh, there were only certain things in my house that we could watch. It was, it was not so much that my dad didn't want us to see bad things on TV. It's just certain things on TV my dad wouldn't watch, so we weren't allowed to watch it. But the thing is, we went from that to high-speed internet, high-speed cable. Now, if something's going wrong, you just call a man on the phone and he'll, he'll come out and fix it, or he can fix it through the telephone for you. So all these changes that have went on in my lifetime that I've seen, don't you think if the technology that we're building like that can carry on that fast, what kind of hereditary traits are we passing on to our loved ones? The fact that someone would get cancer or the fact that someone would get long-term disease or the fact that someone's heart would just simply give out on them, it's not something God put on us. That's something we put on ourselves from the very first man and woman that walked the earth. They brought death. And I think about that all the time. How can I give a spiritual answer on that to this day? And people really feel like I put my heart into that answer. Well, I think about my own household with the sicknesses that we deal in. Uh, how many people in here have had their cells or a family member or somebody they know or love have been sick this week? You know, I have. It seems like every single week something's going on with, with somebody. And fortunately, we do have our healing ministry that, that, that goes out and works diligently at praying for people. And I've heard good reports on that. I've given good reports on that. Amen. So the thing is, what do we turn to in situations like that? Well, I came up with the simplest thing that on why things are the way they are. And it's just like I had one of them aha moments when I was reading it. I remember when I read the Bible, I had never read the Bible 
And I can tell you right now that when I was trying to find where the Ten Commandments were in the Bible, I Googled it on Google. So that can tell you that, you know, it's been since the since we've had these smartphones and you can type things into it. So you know it's not been that long ago. But I would not uh, have been comfortable doing anything that I'm doing now without sitting and just, just reading the whole Bible and studying on it and doing the things that I should do. But that will tell you right now that it's, it's been a short while back, but I feel like I can tell you now that it, it, it'll back up where God doesn't necessarily call qualified, he qualifies to call. And you'll hear me say that a lot because I firmly believe in that because I'm a walking testimony of that. And the thing is, when I Googled the Ten Commandments to find it, I remembered reading through the things in the Bible and starting to read it and all. And over in Exodus, you know, I'd read that. And I would think, well, I just want to know that, you know, because in uh, Exodus it breaks it down and gives you meaning behind it and things like that. But when I wanted to know what the Ten Commandments were, I thought that was important. The first thing I would, would understand is to be able to know that. I was sitting there and I'm like, well, that doesn't really tell me exactly how it's listed on those little plaques we see and on these things we see in the yard because it's got all this other stuff with it. But if you actually go back and read that, though, it tells you why we deal with some of the things that we deal with now. Because the reason that we're dealing with the sicknesses that we deal with and with the hereditary traits that we pass on to others and, and things like that is right there in the Ten Commandments. And so why we do that? Because if you look in Exodus chapter 20, and I'll start with uh, verse 2. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So this is God telling you who he is and what he's done. Okay? So, in verse 3 it says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now see, this is where I was looking at the Ten Commandments and trying to cipher in that verse exactly what's written on that little plaque there. But it's very important that you know what's not written on the, the little plaque there that, that people put in the yard or hang up in the church. Very important that you know the whole background to why things are the way they are. In chapter 5, or in, I mean in uh, verse 5, this is where I finally realized why this message was put on my heart and why I was calling back or looking back on. Uh, you know, the Ten Commandments give me the answers for that. In verse 5 it says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now what he says by visiting the iniquity of the fathers, that means letting them have it. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Right there plain as day. And I read this. And I studied it on where to find the Ten Commandments and everything else. But never really realized what that commandment meant. About having no other gods before God. And you think about now the type of things that, that we deal with now. What I did 10 years ago, according to the Ten Commandments, could affect my great-grandchildren. Because what I did will pass on to my daughter, will pass on to my grandson. And I got to really thinking about that and thinking about how can what I do pass on to them. Mm -hmm. Well, anybody that knew me before, which I don't really think anybody in here did, uh, except my wife, but my daughter, she gets very angry about things a lot. And things that are said, 
a lot of times they're taken in and angry. If you're an angry person, anything that's said to you could be taken the wrong way. Anything that's presented to you could be against you in your own mind because that's how it was with me. Now, I think back on, okay, I can see a lot of my old self and, and my daughter, but I think about the way that she was raised. Now, see, did I give her a, a hereditary thing that, uh, that I had done? And I can honestly say yes because I know when I got back from overseas when I was in the Marine Corps, I had a lot going on upstairs. And, uh, you know, according to my doctor, there's a part of my, my brain that's left in the on switch. It's always ready to go off for any reason. That's my daughter there, you know. So it's safe to say that the physical challenges that stress has put on my body has altered something that, that's been able to pass on. And then I think, well, you know, how in the world does that happen? Well, then I think back on the way that my daughter was raised, the way I was in the household when she was little growing up. What is the first actions that she seen me do when she started paying attention to what's going on in the house? And the neighborhoods that I lived in, people were always coming to get me to go fight with somebody else, to go do violence. There's not a whole lot that my daughter seen when she was a, a, a small child uh, growing up that wasn't violence-based. Fueled by alcohol, too. She grew up around alcoholism, uh, grew up around uh, drug use, uh, grew up around uh, prescription pill abuse, and things like that. And you think about, okay, if, if someone were to abuse uh, prescription pills, well, there's side effects of that medicine that you have to take. And those side effects pass on to someone else because it's in your system. Obviously, if anybody ever told you about the birds and the bees, you know you pass on certain things. But, you know, there are things that we do in our lives that have an effect on our grandchildren that we're going to see when they're born. Sin can affect your DNA. Is what I'm saying. If you don't believe it, read the good book. It'll tell you. You may think, well, he's up there giving scientific things on that. Well, how many times has science tried to prove the Bible wrong and turn the person around that was trying to, to prove it wrong? How many times has science tried to prove certain things in the Bible wrong and turned right around and related it to what they were studying against? Yeah. If your mindset every single day is of hating, you're going to pass that train on to someone else that's growing up around you. It could even be a child that's not your own child that you have living in your own household. Somebody you adopted. Somebody you took in because something happened to another family member. If that's the environment that they're in, they develop those traits from the environment they grow up in. I've said it before, hate is cancer. It will destroy you from the inside out. Amen. When you first start feeling hate towards someone, they don't see it right, right off at first. They don't see it on your face at first because you know, the Holy Spirit still guides us. The Holy Spirit will still guide anyone to make them want to come to the Lord or to make them know right from wrong, whether you're saved or not, the Holy Spirit will still have a tug on your heart. And when you first start to dislike someone or someone does you wrong, right at first you're sitting there trying to accept it and everything and be a good person about it. So they don't see what's going on on the outside first. But once that hate starts stirring up on the inside and eating away at that inside, you'll start noticing it on the outside. How many times have we heard, man, you've changed? Or, girl, you've changed. How many times have we heard that from someone else? Best thing I've ever heard from somebody now is, man, you've changed. Because all I used to be about was hate and violence. What the Ten Commandments say about having no other God before God, we have to think about that on how we, we pass that around. Because with me, Pride was a God to me. 
I was a proud Marine. I, I jumped at the drop of a hat. And people around me knew that I would back them up. And I thought that was one of the best things in the world for them to always come to me to want to involve me in the violence that was about to go on. I thought that made me a good person for them to call on. To have loyalty, but you're loyal to who your God is. And if you don't believe that, you think about it. Are you putting money before the Lord? Are you worried about what you're going to do to obtain these things that you want to have without letting God provide that for you? We already know in the Bible it says if you hate your brother who was standing right there in front of you, how can you love God? See, hate... I almost want to say hate was a demon that I had inside me that, that just caused me not to be happy about that. And, and the worst thing I can say about any of that is I hated myself. Because I was exactly what my father told me I would be. And the world that I grew up in as a child, I was told every single day that I was stupid. That I'd never amount to anything. Guess what? That changed for me being crazy and jumping at the drop of a hat, going and, and you know, it, it almost makes me wonder, was I so stupid that I would allow people to come to me and let me get in their trouble with them? You know, I always worried about people like that because it was always their wives telling them, you can't hang out with him no more because he ain't nothing but trouble. And I'm thinking, well, they came and got me. You know, how can I be in trouble? But they would always lie. They would always lie to their, their wives and all, tell them that, oh, he got in a fight, got locked up again, I got to get bailed out of jail. Well, I always had to stay there until somebody felt sorry for him or the judge see me. But the thing is, I can look back on my past and say that a trait that was passed on to me was always being angry about things. I always feeling like I wasn't good enough, so I had to prove myself, so I had to build up that pride to prove myself. And see, my mother, at the same time my dad would tell me all these things, my mother had already seen that trait development in me and tell me, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. I'd sit there and think, oh yeah, I do right now. My mama's boy goes, you know, you're always coming to my rescue, always praying for me and always babying me and everything else, so i got to prove to them that I'm not some kind of mama's boy. It was just all these things going on. Now, I'm not saying that my mom was not to agree to the trouble I got into. I should have listened to her a long time ago. Because that was the only godly thing we had in our household. I mean, me and my sister and, and, you know, my brother was younger than me. He always tried to do what I did. You know, because I was his uh, example to follow. And see, I'm not trying to make this message about me. I'm trying to use myself as an example of how I had to actually break that chain, that cycle. But unfortunately, as me breaking that chain of that cycle and only serving the one and only true God, instead of money, the bar, the alcohol, the women, all these other things, I never truly found peace. And I always proved the other people that would tell me I wasn't worth anything, I always proved them right by going right out and getting right in, involved in that. But for me, I had already passed that trait onto my daughter. Who right now, I mean, she's obviously not here today, <laughs> so I can talk about her. <laughs> but the thing is, she has my grandson in church. I would never have expected that when we were coming up because I always told her, I ain't going to church. Ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in church. And I would hear her repeating that to other people. So that is a trait that I passed on in my family, which could have been on to that third generation, except that change been broken. A lot of times we want to blame God for the things that we're into. You know, alcoholism is hereditary. How is alcoholism hereditary? Well, doctors tell me it is. One parent drinks it, and while they're drinking and everything, they decide to have a kid. These drugs that they take, it has side effects. 
medicine that we take has side effects. All these side effects come at a cost. But all that cost is related to sin. How, how do we have the common cold war? Well, I don't know about that. You know, certain things that, that are going on with that. You know, I can't tell you all the answers, but I can tell you when someone comes to me and says, why did God take a child from me? Well, you might want to look back in your past, in your family's past, on which God they were serving at the time. If they were serving a fake God, well, obviously bad things are going to happen to you because that God can't do nothing for you. There's no other God that's mentioned in any other book that any other person would follow that can save your life and save your soul besides that one and true God. And I can tell you that because I didn't like openly build a, a altar and worship another God, but I spent a whole lot of my time chasing other things that I should, you know, trying to find that peace when I was trying to put that actual peace I could have had behind me and run from it. <clears throat> Crazy thing that I heard a long time ago is how can you run from something that's everywhere? Well, just Humanity is just dumb enough to try because I did. You know, we'll let someone tempt us into something that we know is wrong because that Holy Spirit in us is poor saying, it's wrong, don't do that. But we'll do it anyway for acceptance. Why is it so hard to do something for God's acceptance? Though? I always said in my sinful past the one thing that I would never really go against in any way was a Christian because I knew then no matter how tough I wanted to be I knew that the toughest life that someone could live is the life of a Christian and I wouldn't mess with that that's probably the only sense I used back then when the Holy Spirit was dealing with me was not to mess with God's children so it's one of the things that I want us to think about today and think about you know, through the week is Whenever we want to think about what's going on in the world and what this world is becoming, don't fall into that group into what it's becoming. Get into that group where God said we can make a change. <laughs> what did we read, Brother Fred? Uh, three people? One person could affect three people? Yes. Well, let's talk about, okay, I don't have a number for a day, but 26 people, and I'm not very really good at math. The doctor told me I don't know my time tables like I should, but 26 people, each of them people talk to three people, and each of them three people talk to three more people. So I can't do that math, but I can really think that's a lot of people. 234. How much? 234. 234 people could be affected by the message it was given when we had 26 people in here. But it don't stop there. I mean, each of the three people. You know, we always hear about these little pyramid effects on people where people's trying to sell something and each person be involved. If you research that, that's the only pyramid effect I know that'll really and truly work. Pass God's word to someone that could pass it to someone else that could pass it to someone else. And you could end that hereditary cycle with these, these diseases by teaching people at a really young age, worship God, put God first. I mean, how many diseases do people get from sticking a needle in their arm? How many diseases get, do people get from being anointed with the Holy Spirit? There's no diseases in that. There's salvation in that. So think about it. What can we do to change that? How can we stop that cycle? I've spent so much time walking around and I've heard so many other people doing it, you know, think back on it. I did it this morning. Man, I've been sick all week. I ain't been feeling good. This is what's wrong with me. This is what's wrong with me. But you know what? I'm not going to get into that. You know, a lot of the physical ailments that I'm dealing with today, I put on myself a long time ago. You know, even by not doing certain things I should have done, you know, in the military, you're supposed to do certain things to avoid contact with 
with other things in all well, you know, I was uh, affected by chemical agents that was used overseas, but I didn't use any kind of protective clothing that the military had. We just flew in there like cowboys in helicopters. And now I'm honestly walking around like a broke down cowboy man. <laughs> but, but the thing is, God didn't do that to me. I did it to myself. But the one thing I can say is, if all the stuff I'm exposed to ends up taking over and killing me, I've got a brand new life waiting for me, everlasting life, where I'm not going to get sick. Good. And see, if you can't say that I'm not scared of dying, because I know where I'm going. People are going to fear death because they're going to fear pain. But beyond the pain and all that, if you can't honestly sit there and say that when I die, I'm going to receive a brand new body that's never going to get sick, I'm going to be in heaven, then you need to talk to God about that. I've heard that there have been people that were born and raised in church very good person, very churchly person, give you the shirt off their back, but I went to hell because they never even received Jesus as their Savior. You can be raised in church and be sat on that front row every single day that the church is open, and your parents can't save you. Your grandparents can't save you. Your kids can get in church and invite you to come to church and change your life in the way that they're living, but your kids can't save you. You have to accept Jesus for yourself, from your mouth, and receive Him into your heart. So if you can't say to, to yourself, without a doubt, I'm going to heaven. then you really need to become connected with God. The only way to become connected with God is through Jesus Christ's salvation. Now, you that have been here before, you know how I do this. I try not to do anything in, in, in this ministry to call people out and make them feel like uh, they need to be apprehensive about what they're going to receive from God. And we do the offering off to the side so as not to put a plate right in front of somebody's face. If you ever look back to people who will tell you they don't come to church, first thing is hypocrites. Second thing is every time I go to church, they want to throw that offer plate right in my face to a church that I don't even attend and ask for my money. Two things with that. One is that person's obviously worshiping money but two I don't do that because we don't we don't have that excuse here for people and the other thing is I don't like being called out from a crowd of people I don't do that either to people it used to make me so upset to be sitting in a church knowing that I needed God but being embarrassed to be as far along in my life and not receiving God that I didn't I just didn't want people to know that I've made it that long through my life without being saved. So I didn't like being called out. And, and the one thing that they'd do to me is they'd have everybody with their head bowed. And I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do. I'm just saying I didn't like it. I grew up in sin and I grew up in pride. I didn't like being called out. Though. But the thing is, they would ease my mind about raising my hand and saying I wasn't saved. And then everybody could look up and look around and all of a sudden they say, hey, you raised your hand, come on up here and get saved. They'd make me mad when they did that to me. And I'm not saying what I do is the right way and what they do is the wrong way, but I will tell you, I do know that it doesn't take me to save any one of you out here in this crowd. It doesn't take the person sitting beside you to save anybody out in that crowd. All it takes is you have a private conversation with God. Now, am I saying you should keep God a secret in your life? No, I'm not, but I'm offering you the easiest way to salvation that I can offer 
to anybody is the easiest route. And then I'm going to challenge you to tell one person. It could be your mom. It could be your best friend. It could be somebody you connect with on Facebook. That's that leap of faith, though, that I'm, that I'm challenging you to do is take that leap of faith. If you do receive God in your life, if you do receive Jesus as your Savior, take that leap of faith and tell somebody. Then you'll be comfortable telling other people about Jesus once you can tell them what He's done in your life. So I'm going to offer that choice for you to make and eliminate the middleman by saying, okay, everybody, let's just bow our heads and go to God together as one. Okay, and we're going to say this prayer. If you're not saved, all you have to do is say, say this prayer. We have a lot of people that uh, watch through the, the internet that can't get out of church or for some reason they're not in church now and, and would watch this message when it's put on there. And it can apply to them just as well because they don't have someone to lead them to the altar in their living room. But we can lead them to God from right here in this building. Yeah. Okay, every head bowed. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we're coming to you to, to try to offer the salvation, Lord, that you have that you have given us through the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father God. And we ask anyone out there who does not know Jesus as their personal Savior, Lord, we just ask that they just repeat this, Lord, to you, between you and them, Father God. Lord, I'm a sinner. Father God, I ask you to forgive me for my sins that I have that I have done. And I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, that I may be forgiven. Father God, I ask for that forgiveness. And I accept Jesus in my heart because I believe in Jesus. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And Father God, with this, I know now that I am saved because I have said the prayer and I have asked for Jesus in my life. And I have acknowledged the existence of Jesus. And Father God, I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. It's that simple. It's that simple. And if you said that prayer for the first time, now then I want to tell you something else about this salvation too. The way that I was raised, the way that I grew up. I thought that every time I got back out in the world sinning, that I had to come back and get saved again. That's, that's not the case. You ask for salvation one time. Jesus died on the cross one time. You're saved. If you go back out and you sin, we're all going to sin. We're all going to fall short of God's glory by sinning. But the only thing we do after that is just ask forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you for those sins. All the sins that you had in the past, if you said that prayer today, all the sins that you had in the past are gone. They don't exist no more. So daily I find myself having to ask forgiveness for the sins I've done that day. But it's not a hard thing. It's just me going to bed with peace of mind that God forgave me again. And try to know in your heart that God will make that change if you allow Him. I've heard so many people tell me that I want to start coming to church and I want to get saved, but I need to change some things in my life before I come to church. You can't change your life without God. You just come to church. God will do the hard work. You just follow that, that calling in your heart that tells you what's right and wrong. And those days that you fall short of that and do wrong instead of right, just ask forgiveness. Brother Dave, would you dismiss us in prayer? Father, we give you thanks for your word. We give you thanks for the love that you show us every day, Father. Thank you, Father, for watching over us and guiding us. Help us, Lord, to be your servants, Father, to do things according to your will. Help us, Father, to hear the Holy Spirit. And Father, we do things your way. Thank you for being with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just want to thank God for what He has done in my life and the changes that He's made in my life. There's so many people that I run into now that said, man, I can tell there's a difference in you.